Have receptive readers, this is James Lynch, and I hope you have started with your affirmations today, one of them being your love for God and also the love for yourself. We'll talk more about that in affirmations later because the subject that I want to talk about um, this morning, I haven't had my coffee yet. I hope my voice don't give up now. <laughs> but this is what I want to share with you. Uh, this is a fast-paced world, is it not? Unless um, you're on a farm. And granted, uh, some people will feel even farm life um, is fast-paced because, you know, it's according to a schedule where you uh, go to bed um, early and you get up early, you see. Uh, unless you get up in age. But I just wanted to uh, let you know all the same that life, though, uh, at least back, you know, back in the day, was still a very peaceful work day, no matter really what you were doing. There was a serenity to it. Um, if you went to town, uh, to the market, uh, you may still spend some moments, a few moments, uh, talking with other uh, farmers, uh, uh, other passerbys or what have you at the market. And it was just a very uh, nice neighborly experience. There was no rushing. Uh, if you talked about uh, maybe some type of um, business venture or farming um, marketing together uh, type collaboration or set up, where, you know, you would exchange fruits and vegetables for their fruits and vegetables or what have you uh, when you go and meet and set up your stands. Because, uh, you see, by doing that, uh, you didn't even have to pay money, you know, to one another. Sometimes it's almost like, oh, when I got get there, I know I want some watermelon and and so and so loves my corn and things of that nature. And so, you know, you may make the exchange that way and keep your stuff. So you don't even really have to pay cash, you know, just stuff like that happens. Uh, but it was still a very uh, a peaceful way of doing things uh, for some persons. Now, we're, we are in what they call, uh, many of us, the concrete jungle. And in this type of environment, where it would normally take, you will have, it wasn't even considered a luxury like it is today. Uh, what is considered a luxury of time in the concrete um, jungle is not considered a luxury of time, but just, you see, a staple, a normal everyday way of living when you have the, um, the farm life, the urban life, or what have you. At least you see up until a few decades ago, and I think it still may really be that way. Um, well, decisions are made very fast, it's a fast paced life, and at the same time, I gave you an example of uh, meetings, a meeting structure, okay, uh, that different companies and different elevated organizations actually use. And I'm going to give you another reason. I didn't see, I didn't go into detail on why a two hour meeting limit uh, was helpful. I just gave you one example on how it did help to keep good people or maintain their good people because they weren't, you know, overburdened or wore out from going into different meetings at times and never knowing when in the world they're going to get out that meeting, you see, and never knowing when in the world they're going to get out that meeting. Uh, now I'm going to extend further on that thought. See, there are actually, um, and I won't mention it in this one, in this setting, or I won't mention exactly what the uh, corporate arrangement. I'm trying to find the right word to describe Look, without using the word. I'm trying to find the right word uh, or what have. OK, well, I'll just go ahead 
and I'll say the word, <laughs> you know. Uh, but it's actually been known, you see, in the um, entertainment agency, it's also been used um, in the buying and selling job markets um, from um, automobiles uh, to uh, housing, all sorts of stuff in that way, where it's like, even though humans, let me give you this reference uh, instead of just uh, telling you this. Um, there was once a interview that was given a Facebook um, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Where he was being asked why he keeps things so simple. You see, even the T-shirts and things that he used to wear into the office or what have you. And all of that would basically already be set out anyway, like uh, the day before or what have you. And he went on to relate that humans only have several thousands. I think he got the, um, I think he said the exact number, uh, but like several thousand decision making um, optimum, see optimum decision making abilities in their brain each day, basically. Uh, so in other words, we said, hey, you got all your marbles. <laughs> you know, that's what we used to say. It. But what happens is this. As the day goes on and you're making decision over here, decision on what to wear, uh, decision on where you want to go to eat for lunch or, or what have you. And then you got those boardroom decisions that can burn up a lot of them, you know, <laughs> you know, burn up a lot of your marbles where as you go. Throughout the day, you have less and less marbles or marbles or the nutritional element, the awareness, the cognizant, you see, to make those uh, sharp, maybe best decisions. You see what I'm saying? Uh, as the day goes on. And in basically, see, I'm, I'm intimating what he was saying because I know what he's talking about that you can actually then get to a point where you pass that threshold of how many really good, sharp, cognizant decisions that, you know, you really could make when you're fresh. And next thing you know, it gets a little bit more, um, you know, difficult coming to an, you know, an understanding or make a great decision. I'm, I'm going to give you an example of this and it's bear with me because I, I really am going somewhere with this. Um, it, it's, it's something bigger to it. Okay. That, for example, uh, this is something that I, that I used to do in some of my consultant. As time um, went on sometimes throughout the day, it was like, uh, exactly what Mark Zuckerberg had said about certain things, you know, even in my occupation of what I was doing. And don't you know, persons could ask me something and I would not readily uh, have all the thoughts. Look, you probably say like now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what coffee does for me that I haven't had yet. But anyway, uh, I may not have all the thoughts to resolve or even solve a problem or what have you. And you know what I would say sometimes uh, to certain persons? I don't have that answer for you right now, but I tell you what, I most likely I have it for you tomorrow. I'll most likely figure this out by tomorrow or what have you. And you know what would actually happen is after, you know, eating, and getting a good night's rest and everything. Let me tell you, sometimes even in the middle of the night or first thing in the morning, that answer that I may have been struggling with to get to solve this or it would just be the best optimal way of doing something that just wouldn't come. Or I tell you, as we use the expression to save my life, you know, after one o'clock in the afternoon or what have you, uh, it came. And it worked 
and it was the best. And, and that happened so, so many times. Well, I'm sharing this with you when it comes to decision making. And I've already used the uh, buying and selling market, the entertainment industry and uh, other, you know, elevated occupations why meetings really just, you know, shouldn't go beyond uh, two hours if they couldn't have to. Now, I'm not talking about those education centers and, you know, and, and you know, you rent out different hotel rooms and things of that nature where you have those seminars and stuff. I'm not talking about that. No, no, no. That's a that's just a nice experience where, you know, you have those speeches in the day and um activities or what have you and then you eat lunch and stuff like that then you come back and you enjoy the rest of the day no that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about you see what i'm talking about those straight up you know business meetings where it's like look we're trying to get uh you know we're trying to get some money for this uh we're trying to um uh figure out what's the best play for that you know entertainment industry you see and what's to, you know, houses and cars and things of that nature. I know they do it, but see, now I'm getting to the reason why they actually do it. Okay. Why they actually do it. Uh, do it. And you've heard me mention, you have some very nice car salesmen, wonderful car salesmen. And, um, <laughs> and somehow, a lemon still is sold sometimes to people, but all the same. But the technique that many of them do use, it's a wearing down process. It happens in the housing market. It happens in the entertainment industry, especially where they already know. It is, you can have a meeting at one o'clock that afternoon after a wonderful lunch but they already know that they got to take you past the quitting time. You see, even though they really don't even have to. But as that time goes on, remember, you're losing less and less of your marbles to ask the right questions. The, you know, the, the best questions that will work for you to get the best deals. And the next thing you know, these meetings are going still into the wee hour the next day morning. And, and this has happened time and time again so that people did not uh, really make the best decision for themselves. They were just playing war out. They were just playing war out. And it is that that's actually a tactic that I can't remember what it's called, but it's a tactic that is used. And so I'm sharing all of this with you because of the simple fact you have to do what's best for yourself. And it may look like the the ball is in somebody else's court or what have you, you know, a corporate America or, th or things of that nature. But you know what? It's not going to do you one bit of good if you say, well, I'm going to get this contract or I'm going because this is going to give me you, you know, or what I've been asking for for all my life or what have you. Well, you know, you have that choice. But I say this once and I say it again. It's not going to do you one bit of good to get this contract, to get this car or, or what have you. If you are not going to be able to enjoy it because of the devil being in the details and so on so many other ways in the contract that it's like, man, yeah. Um, I'm thinking about some persons who have had some managerial supervised positions before where boy, when you look on paper, it looked like they had like uh, one month, two month vacations a year. You see, because they, the people realize how much they use their intellectual proudness to keep the company running good and great and stuff like that. And so you have one month, two months vacation a year and they never get to use it. Why? Because there are other aspects of their job uh, that really made it so they wouldn't even be able to step away from their desk, so to speak, in order to enjoy it. 
because of the heavy amount of responsibility that they did, you know, place upon them. Take what I just said, meditate on it, and you can apply it to, as I mentioned, your other occupations that you're pursuing, the entertainment industry and things of that nature. Make sure whatever you are going for, you truly are going to be able to exercise everything that's in that contract and that the devil in the details uh, in the contract doesn't turn into one of those uh, greater than or less than propositions. So in other words, on one line, they're stating you have this, but then on the other line, it's stating something that is like, but the greater good will overtake that. That That's the expression that I'm, I'm using here. No, make sure whatever you sign up for, you don't have the pretext taking something away from you. You don't have the devil in the de- details taking something away from you. And also when it comes to those meetings, I'm sorry, somebody can tell you all they want. Look, we got to make this deal today. We got to do it. Well, you know what? Well, you know what? Okay. If it's that important, but you don't want to respect, you see, uh, oh, what I'm trying to do to make the best deal. And don't let me go home and rest and think about it. Uh, okay. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we, you know, we couldn't or, or, you know, make a deal this time, but maybe next time. And you heard me mention this before. You can say something. Maybe next time, no matter what it is. Have a good day, perceptive readers. You have just listened to the Perceptive Readers Podcast. Remember, until next time, if you read something that encourages you to improve or enhance your life for the better, it becomes your reality.